All right, Alexander, let's talk about what is happening in France. And uh, we have to talk about Marie Le Pen. Yes. And it looks like she is now rising. Now, we did a video about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and we talked about uh, the AfD. Yeah. Now, the AfD is, is rising because the Olaf Schultz government, uh, Baerbach, Habeck, the Greens are just incompetent. Let's just be polite about it. They're incompetent. Well, you have France now and Macron and uh, Marine Le Pen. Looks like she's capitalizing once again on Macron's incompetence. Now, we've done many videos on Macron and Marine Le Pen and the rise of Marine Le Pen and the fall of Macron. But Macron always seems to find a way to stick around. Yes. What do you make of this recent surge uh, in popularity for yeah, Marine Le Pen? I mean, the, the, the first thing to say is that not only is she surging in popularity, it's beginning to look more solid than it has ever done before. I mean, she, she seems now to be a, attracting a critical mass of support in France. I mean, she's had periods in the past when she seemed to be doing quite well, but one always suspected that there was a fragility behind it. This time, it looks different. Now, she's at least 10 points ahead of Macron, and the indications are that she's actually extending her lead over him. Um, and she seems to be extending her lead over all other candidates. And the very interesting thing that's now starting to happen is that if you go back to the last presidential elections, there was a populism of the left, led by Jean-Luc Mélenchon, and the populism of the right, which is led by Marine Le Pen. And they were all, they were both at sort of roughly the same levels. It wasn't clear where the support would crystallise. Would it crystallise around Mélenchon on the left or Le Pen on the right? I think we can now say conclusively that it's crystallising around Le Pen on the right. And in fact, we're starting to see a drift of voters who formerly voted for Mélenchon, they're now starting to drift towards Le Pen. Now, that is incredibly important because previously, votes that went to Mélenchon, those types of left-wing voters, were the last voters you would expect to vote for Le Pen. I mean, it, the, the, there seemed to be a sort of barrier that they would never cross, they would never cro vote for her, person like Le Pen, who was identified with the extreme right, or at least, I mean, labelled as being on the extreme right. But now they're doing it, and they're starting to do so in increasing numbers, and that's one of the reasons why her vote is rising, and why one could start to say that it's, it's consolidating. So she's winning support amongst young people, she's winning support amongst working class people, working class people in France have been supporting her in large numbers for a very long time. But middle class people are also coming round to her and people who formerly self-identified as left are starting to do so as well. So it's, there, is a, there is a shift and it's a decisive one. And very, very interestingly, and this is where she is, Le Pen is completely different from, say, Maloney. She is taking a completely different line on the Russia-Ukraine conflict than conventional European politicians are. She continues to hold her position that uh, the Western support for Ukraine is misguided. She um, speaks of Crimea as being Russian. She's not retreated on any of those points up to now at all. And nonetheless, as I said, support around her seems to be crystallizing. So the longer Macron stays in office, the less time and space is created for the French establishment to come up with some other type of figure that they can put up and falsely claim, like they did with Macron, is an anti-establishment figure who is nonetheless not, uh, um, you know, uh, extreme rightist like Le Pen is. The stronger Le Pen support becomes and the more solid it becomes. I have to say, for the first time in Le Pen's career, I'm starting to think that there's a real, real possibility that in a few years' time, 
she will be president of France. And that is a huge shift. Yeah, it really surprised me that um, with the Crimea statement, she made a, this, that statement like two weeks ago. Uh, basically, she said Crimea is Russia, and it always has been. That's pretty much what she said. I'm paraphrasing, but that was her statement. Crimea has always been Russian, so let's just stop this nonsense. And, uh, and then when they tried to shame her, you know, you're a Putin troll, you're a Putin propagandist, you're in the pocket of Putin, you're paid by the Kremlin. They tried to shame her, and she just doubled down on her first statement and said, whatever, you know, it's, I'm going to stick by my position and I'm not backing down. Yes. Crimea is Russia. Russia. That's pretty much what she said. Yes. And that surprised me because yes. usually when, you know, they go after Le Pen or any politician with the you're in Putin's pocket uh, tactic, uh, usually a politician will try to walk it back or explain themselves. No, Le Pen didn't. She just doubled down on it. And that told me that uh, she's feeling... She's feeling confident. She's feeling emboldened. Uh, she feels good about her position. Not only that, I mean, it also suggests that uh, she senses that French, the French public supports her on this. Now, you know, France is an incredibly sophisticated society. It's one of the most sophisticated electorates in the world. It's probably one of those electorates that's able to see through a lot of the things that, you know, the, you know, the media campaigns, they're able to see through that. They were also, I'm going to say, particularly sceptical during the pandemic. I'm going to be careful what I say here, but um, that seems to have hardened scepticism in France even more than usual. And I think it probably did affect a lot of sentiments in France as well. So I think that um, Le Pen not only feels confident that she can take that position, but I think she also feels that she's confident because she has a critical mass of support for her when she takes that position. And that position, taking that position, actually is benefiting her rather than otherwise. So it, it, it's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic. And as I said, I don't know how... It's going to play out in the end. But for the first time, I really am starting to think that we could very well see her president of France. And, and I think there's another dynamic at play, which is that Macron doesn't really want to be president of France. No, no. You, really, you can tell. So he, he wants something bigger. He wants EU. He wants UN. I don't know. He, wants, he feels like he should be in, in a bigger position and a bigger spotlight should be on him rather than just being the president of France. He, you can tell he, 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 he doesn't want it. He's not excited by it anymore. And, uh, and, and I think that's, that, that shows now that you yes. know, Macron yeah. is just disinterested. Well, absolutely. He's bored, with, he's bored with being president of France, and the French are becoming increasingly bored and exasperated with him. Well, they didn't never liked him. I mean, they never warmed to him. But now they're becoming bored with him as well. <laughs> That's an extremely dangerous thing. Now, I mean, he basically lost his way in the legislative elections that followed the presidential election because his party failed to win a majority in the French parliament. And that was a big blow. And, of course, he compounded it with his pension reform, which he basically imposed by decree which has lost him even more support. And, I mean, it, it's essentially obvious now that he's not governing France in any serious way. He's become a kind of high-level administrator, which arguably, by the way, is what Macron always was. I mean, he was always... There was always something of the official about him rather than of the politician about him, if one has to say, which is why one reason why he wants to be, you know, get into a more, as you said... Um, important, stellar um, official post, you know, Secretary General of the UN, President of the European Commission, President of the European Party, something of that kind. That's really what he's more comfortable with. But he's never been particularly interested in the real France. He's always come from this sort of official class and class of officials. And... Whatever else she is, Marine Le Pen is a politician, one of the few left in Europe, by the way, 
but she is a politician. She does have the ability to connect with people in France. She's also, she's also, I think it's fair to say, becoming a better politician. I mean, she's made many missteps, in my opinion, uh, over the course of her career. But she does seem to be somebody who learns from her missteps and her mistakes. She's seen off the various challenges and legal challenges that have been brought against her. She's in firm control of her party. Her party is now strongly represented across France in local government. It's the biggest party in the French National Assembly. And as I said, she's starting to attract votes from people in France who would never have voted for her before. As I said, for the first time, just to say it again, I've said it about three times now, but for the first time, I think that President Le Pen, President Le Pen, is starting to look like a real possibility. And that will be a breakthrough for France. The first time France elects somebody outside the mainstream since um, the resignation of President de Gaulle. President de Gaulle was not part of the mainstream in France when he became president, or indeed prime minister in the 50s. I mean, he, he came from outside the system and basically took it over and changed it. So, but, but you know, since de Gaulle left the scene, the system has re-established itself. Marine Le Pen would be the first person from outside the system since he, de Gaulle left the scene to uh, become leader of France. And it was the first time I think I'm right in saying this, that a woman has become president of France as well. So again, not to be underestimated if you know France as well as I do. Yeah, um, the the rise of AFD to close out uh, the video, are they still rising? They're still yeah, absolutely. The it looks absolutely. like it's, There's it looks no like sign. they're There's... also showing that they can, yeah. that they can uh, stick around and stick it out. Well, they've now they've now surpassed the twenty percent barrier. Now that again is um, unusual. <laughs> well, it's not unusual. It's unprecedented for the IFD. It, it, it is a sign that they are becoming that they are also beginning to gain critical mass in Germany. My sense is that they are still more fragile, a lot more fragile than Le Pen is, because of course, I mean, ultimately, Le Pen is now a very, very experienced, very effective professional politician and she's been around for a long time um though she's still quite young by the way but she's been around for a long time but she's built up her party so that it has a presence in every part of france and a presence in local government and a presence in the national assembly the IFD is still some way behind that. I mean, quite a long way behind that. But nonetheless, they are still rising. And I think this is going to start creating concern. I mean, at the moment, we're still some years away from the next presidential election in France. I think it's 2027 from memory. But um, before long, if she continues to rise, if she's, her support continues to harden, then, I mean, you will start to see panic and you start to see, you know, the all the usual things, or all, all the you know the, the pulling out the stops to try and stop her. But she survived that kind of thing in the past, and she's probably better equipped to handle it now than she's ever been up to now. I should say add something else about France. France has a very large independent media, which, for example, Britain doesn't. And Germany doesn't do anything like the same extent. So you, you get lots of independent voices in France, places where people can talk and argue and discuss things in ways that don't, don't happen in Britain, doesn't happen yet in Britain, doesn't happen to the same extent in Germany. And that also is working to her advantage. All right, we will end it there at duran.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute. Rockfin and Telegram and go to the Durant shop. 10% off. Use the code. Good day. Take care.